today I'm going to tell you the story of one of history's totally badass women and my personal hero, Julie D'Aubney. Julie D'Aubney was born in the early 1670s and grew up in the riding school at the Tuileries Palace in Paris. She spent her youth at the Grand Stables. Her father was an accomplished swordsman and wanting to keep his only child safe, had her trained alongside the pages, molding her into an expert duelist and studied in the courtly arts. By the age of 14, she seduced Count de Armagnac as he was the only man her father could not refuse, his boss. She was then sort of married to de Maupin, who, according to rumors, was sent off to collect taxes the morning after the wedding. The marriage was a total sham so that the Count could continue his affair with de Aubney. But married life did not suit de Aubney, and she ran off with a fencing master. Life on the road was not easy, and they made their living giving fencing demonstrations in fairs and taverns. So proficient was she with the sword, so strong, graceful, and skilled, that some doubted she could, in fact, be a woman. And one night, a heckler called out that she was a boy, some cavalier or fencing master's protege, and not a woman at all. Enraged at this, Daubney cast down her foil and ripped open her shirt so that the audience could judge for themselves whose claim had the greater merit. It is said that the receipts that evening were particularly good. She began her singing career with the Marcel Opera, and her early appearances on stage were admired, particularly by one young woman with whom she fell in love. The girl's family quickly packed her off to a convent in Avignon. Julie followed, entering as a postulate. One night after an elderly nun died, the pair stole the body, placed it in the girl's cell, and set fire to the convent, then escaped. She would be burned at the stake, that is, if anyone could catch her. The girl was returned to her family eventually, and Julie continued her journey through the countryside, now back in men's clothes. One day, she literally bumped into a young nobleman, de Albert, who challenged her to a duel, not realizing she was a female. She beat him, wounded him, and then the next day found him, began nursing him back to health. And in some accounts, he is the great romance of her life. At the very least, they were lifelong friends and lovers. Julie then asked her estranged lover, the Count, to secure a position for her with the Royal Opera. He petitioned King Louis XIV who loved nothing more than supporting artists who were scandalous. When he heard her story, he not only sponsored her for the stage, but also dismissed her previous crimes. She went on to become a star, appearing in all of the opera's major productions from 1690 to 1694. She was adored and celebrated. In 1703, she fell in love with Madame la Marquise de Florence, who she described as the most beautiful woman in France. The two women lived, according to one account, in perfect harmony for two years until de Florissac died of a fever. Distraught, Julie entered a convent where she died at the age of 33, in the words of Gilbert, one of her biographers, destroyed by an inclination to do evil in the sight of her God and a fixed intention not to, after which he claims her body was cast upon the rubbish heap. A rather dismal end to one of history's totally badass women and my personal hero, Julie de Obney.